Last week, startup brand Aptera unveiled its Gamma Pre-Final prototype at the fully charged event in San Diego. I went there and had the amazing opportunity to see this. I even got to sit in the updated Aptera, which was apparently a big deal because this option was only supposed to be available for people who had pre-ordered the Aptera. Nice! In any case, for today's episode, I'll share a few highlights from the fully charged event and some of my own and others' thoughts and views about the Aptera 2. Stay tuned! Michael Bakunin here. I've been in touch with the Aptera Media team for quite a while now, and our initial plan was to organize a proper test drive and review of the new Gamma prototype. Unfortunately, life got in the way, and a few things went wrong closer to the event, so the test drive didn't really happen. Nevertheless, I was pretty happy just to have an excuse to visit San Diego again and reconnect with old friends and partners. Nick, I know you're watching my channel, don't forget to click the like button. Now, I should point out that Fully Charged is not your typical EV event and it's not one I would normally attend. It's consumer-oriented, mostly targeting people on the fence and trying to decide whether it's a good idea to buy an electric vehicle. But what made it different from other similar events for me was that this time it was full of YouTube celebrities, since it was organized by the famous British EV YouTube channel Fully Charged. The YouTubers and other public opinion influencers conducted a number of panel discussions and answered questions from the audience, but the Aptera reveal almost felt like a sensation. There was so much attention from every side. Part of it was the Aptera CEOs Chris Anthony and Sandy Munro, who were both very inspirational and approachable. They created a huge amount of buzz and excitement around the vehicle. Just to clarify, Sandy's engineering firm Munro & Associates is behind the engineering of this vehicle. Sandy himself was on the stage vouching for high standards of safety and quality targets for the Aptera. The interest and public reaction to the unveil clearly exceeded the Aptera media team's expectations. There were long lines of people waiting eagerly for a chance to take a seat in the Aptera for just for a few seconds. And it was a never-ending story. I gave up waiting and decided to try, but I quickly realized but that the option was only possible for Aptera reservation holders. It's not a big deal, it's just 100 bucks, but I didn't have it. Luckily, my media card played a role and uh, I got a stamp on my head that allowed me to queue for just one hour to access the Aptera. That's crazy, right? The good news, the line itself felt like one community of future Aptera owners and people were eagerly sharing with me their impressions and expectations about the new EV. So I went with an Aptera um, because of styling, um, a lot of the like the range and solar qualities. So going and being able to um, not just go and be electric, but also not have to rely on the grid. Um, with everything going on in California right now, going and being able to not rely on the grid, but still drive around kind of guilt-free from the sun um, is a wonderful, wonderful plus. Um, and then having, you're gonna have this amazing vehicle that's gonna draw everyone in and want to talk to you about electric cars and vehicles and get more people to convert, which is amazing. A few things make the Aptera unique in the current electric vehicle landscape. First of all is the design. It's a very futuristic two-seater, and even more iconically, it's on three wheels. A lot of people were actually comparing the Aptera with an airplane. Number two, the up to 1,000 mile driving range on a single charge, propelled by its aerodynamic body shape. Number three, it's covered by solar panels, which can generate enough electricity for a 40 mile ride per day. We will discuss the use cases a bit later, but if you are looking for a commuter, you you might not need to charge the Aptera at all. And while we are on the topic of charging, a fourth unusual feature is the embedded Tesla charging port. As far as I know, it's the only non-Tesla EV today compatible with the Tesla charging standard. That alone has a lot of advantages. 
a smaller port and connector and hopefully Tesla supercharging network accessibility, which is the largest and most reliable charging network currently in the United States. But in all fairness, there were quite a few questionable decisions and statements made by the Aptera team too. The extra long driving range is one of them. I know it's not the best benchmark ever, but none of the people who stayed in line with me pre-ordered the 1000 mile Aptera. It felt to me that the sweet spot for most people was between 4 and 600 miles on a single charge. So we went with the 400 mile range. Um, we have a Model S right now, so going and being able to stop and supercharge and being able to do that on trips now and realize that having a ton more range is amazing, but the reality is you're already stopping and you're already grabbing food, using the restroom, you're already spending 20 minutes or so at a stop, so why not just be charging and go um, and use less battery? Like think about it as a full like eco experience, like using less batteries, being more efficient fully and not just, um, not just counting on the vehicle, having like some self-responsibility with that as well. The Aptera's pricing seems a bit too optimistic to me, even in current market conditions. The Aptera starts from 25k, which is the amount you'd be expected to pay for a used EV from an established and proven car maker such as Nissan or Chevrolet. I can tell that the Aptera is not eligible for EV subsidies, which I sincerely hope may change. Still, Aptera has secured 32,000 pre-orders. The commitment is only $100, but the size of the order bank shows that there is a lot of interest in this product. In short, it looks like early adopters are willing to pay this price. The last point on my list is the ingress-egress functionality. Chris Anthony emphasized several times that the Aptera has grown in all directions, adding a few inches here and there. However, when I got into the Aptera, I immediately noticed that the sitting position wasn't anywhere near close to SUVs, which we tend to be more comfortable with these days. And when I tried to get out, my head bumped into the scissor door. I saw many other people experience the same bad luck while I was waiting for my turn too. In short, I don't think camping is even an option in the Aptera, even though the CEO has been highlighting it as in a cool feature. Sure, it sounds very exciting, but I just can't see how it would be practical. During the panel discussions, Chris Anthony honestly said, our vehicle is not for everyone. I definitely agree with this, but it's irrefutable still that the Aptera is generating a lot of interest and people are willing to explore it. To complete 30,000 orders will be a challenge in its own for the Aptera team in my opinion, as they are still a new car maker. As we've seen already, Lucid and Rivian are both struggling. However, they might be a shortcut by going to an experienced contract manufacturer such as Magna. Fisker has chosen this strategy and I personally believe it's one that should work. Nevertheless, I wish the best of luck to the Aptera team. And let's try one new thing in honor of this video. If this video gets 100 likes, I will pre-order the Aptera. Let's go for it! Cheers!